Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor, glory, and praise goes to the Most High Yahweh in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. Brothers and sisters, I I was just doing um, a video, well, at least researching a video about end time Bible prophecy, and took a break. And I looked at my phone and someone shared this message with me. And it is a shame what we are going through in this country. But it's Bible prophecy and it's part of the curses that were to come upon us. And even though a lot of us are awake, there's still many more to be awakened brothers and sisters and there are going to be some who choose not to hear what thus saith the most high and obey come back to him and obey his commandments so we're going to see a lot more killings but you as an awakened hebrew awakened member of zion know the truth and you know why these things are going to continue to happen because of the individual choices each one of us is making out here. You have to understand that they have not chosen the Most High yet. They're still underneath another religion and another deity. They have not come out of, come out of her and turn back to the Most High to receive that protection from the Most High. So I want you to watch this video, then I'm going to read some script after that. Prior to today, I've made a decision. I had decided to keep my grief private and home. But today, I have to record on what the world to know. What a mother goes through when your child is stolen and executed for no reason. India Kager, my daughter, was 27 years old, 27, my baby, sitting in a car at a 7-Eleven with my four-month-old grandson, Roman, in the back seat. Virginia Beach Police SWAT, not a regular uniform team, the SWAT team ambushed my daughter's car, blocked her car. They fired, the, they threw a flashbang grenade at her car, knowing she was in the car, knowing my grandson was in the car. They fired 30 rounds, 30, 30 rounds. Who does that? How do you do that? You know it's a woman in a car. How do you do that? 30 rounds, 30 rounds. And they executed my baby in less than three hours of her being in Virginia Beach. She lived here in Maryland with us. And they won't release the names of the officers. There were four SWAT officers fired on her of Virginia Beach Police, but there were many more involved. How do you have a conscience? How do you do this? Please help me. Please help me. I have two grandsons. Roman, he was in the car. India protected him. She had bullet wounds in her back. I've seen her pictures. In her back, my daughter turned. In her back! Oh God, help me. I can't even tell you how bad this hurts. There are no words to articulate this. I'm gonna put it out. I won't stop fighting for my baby. I won't stop fighting for India. I won't stop fighting for Roman. I won't stop fighting for, for, for Evan. 
They have won't stop fighting for Mr. Perry because he did not have due process of law. There was no arrest warrant out for him. But my daughter was in the car and they saw her and they took her life. Why? 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 <laughs> Why? How do you do that? And you have a conscience. How do you do that? They're with their families. I don't have my baby. Please help me. Please. As you can see, the daughters of Zion are wailing for their children still because of the fierce nation that we were turned over to due to our sins. Police opened fire, sending hell of 30 bullets into the car, killing a single mother with four-month-old son in back seat. These are the monsters we are dealing with, and it's just going to get worse for Zion. It's part of the judgment. This is Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 3. But thou, O Yahweh, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried mine heart toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. You see, we have been turned over to their hands to be sheep for the slaughter. And as we're waking up, we are seeing we are, and we are remembering in the past how they slaughtered us mercilessly. Man, woman, and child, they did not regard young or old. And that's in Deuteronomy. We'll get to that one next. Let's go back to Zechariah. Uh, let's see, where is it? Zechariah 11 and 4. Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, Feed the flock of the slaughter. In verse 7, And I will feed the flock of the slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staffs, the one I call beauty and the one and the other bands and I fed the flock we are called the flock of the slaughter because we have been given into the other nations hands to to be slain why because we refuse to obey the most high's law statutes and commandments so he put these curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28 upon us for a sign and for a wonder forever until Shiloh come, until Hamashiach come. As Mosai says here, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Mosai thy Elohim, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And, uh, says here, the Most High shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And we have been scattered. We have been given into their hands. And they do not regard the young or the old brothers and sisters. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail for longer for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thine hand and we have no might in our hand I mean, we have access to courts and everything we see what's happening at these trials when, they, when these people go on trial they get off with a either scot free or with a smack on the hand a light sentence because we are given into their hands. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. And it's a shame how they doing us, brothers and sisters, but it must come to pass. I hate seeing things like this happen. The stranger that is within thee shall get very high, shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. And that's why we're still in this low condition today 
Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue, pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest, or listen not unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he command thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. These curses, Deuteronomy chapter 28 through 15, fit a people today. The Negroes scattered abroad underneath the necks, or underneath the hands of every nation we are in. Therefore shall thy serve thine enemies, which the Most High shall send thee, shall send against thee in hunger. It's the Most High that sent these people to punish us. This wicked group of people shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And of course, during slavery, we had yokes of iron upon our necks. Now we have economic yokes of iron upon our necks. And we are want for everything. We have to get all our food from them. We have to get our water from them and our clothing from them. We don't own nothing. No resources, no land. You know, I mean that we could sustain ourselves as a nation. We have to go to them for everything. We're underneath their hand. The most I shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. And that's why they got the eagle as their national bird. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. And of course, we didn't understand that they're English a nation of fierce continents. They are fierce people which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. And that's why this young maiden was killed in the car. And even the child could have been killed if it wasn't for the mother blocking the bullets and the bullets was all in her back. They was even trying to kill the child. You see, these curses are upon us, and they're even more pronounced. Well, they've been pronounced since we, you know, some of us got here through the transatlantic slave trade. And you can read the rest of this on your own right here. I'm just going to go down here to 64. Well, this is another one. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of the law, them will the Most High bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And that's why we have cancer, diabetes, uh, heart disease, and all manner of sicknesses that we didn't have before coming upon us out here. Verse 64, And the Most High shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even to the other. And there thou shalt serve other deities. This is why you're serving the white Caucasian JC, whom they gave an image for you to worship, which is not the biblical image of our Savior. He was a dark-skinned man with woolly hair, as Revelations chapter 1, verses 14 through 15 state. Which thou which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So with with that cross, we, you know, with this Elohim, this JC character comes a cross made of wood. And you got a statue of the image of this Caucasian man on it. Some of you got the images in your house, on your bodies, it's tattoos. These are these are idols that we were foretold to serve when we get to these lands of these other nations, even wood and stone. And then some of us start partaking Ishmael's religion, where they worship the cobblestone, where they circle it every year. These are real curses that come upon us, brothers and sisters. 
And of course, we have this verse here. And the most I shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt is synonymous with the house of bondage. Let me go to Deuteronomy 32. And let's see which one. Might have been 30. Okay, here we go. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Deuteronomy 5 and 6. I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Deuteronomy 6 and 12. Then beware, lest thou forget the Most High, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Over and over, Egypt is synonymous with house of bondage. So let's go back. to Deuteronomy, well, let me just do it this way. Twenty-eight and sixty-eight again. And the most I shall bring thee into the house of bondage again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, slave men and slave women, and no man shall buy you. That means no one will come back and get us, and we've been here ever since. So what's the answer? to saving us from these wicked heathens hands turn back to our father with all our heart all our mind all our soul and obey his commandments and my heart does go out to her and her family and all of the lost sheep of the house of Israel some of them died in their sins by a fierce hand of a heathen Gentile. Some even died at the hands of our own people innocently. But how were they living, brothers and sisters? We don't know how their lifestyle was, what they was participating in. Was they still worldly was out there doing dirt? Was they even married? You know, the Most High is going to repay these heathens for everything they have done to us. But we ourselves got to recognize why these things are happening and gonna happen still. It's because we don't know the fullness of the Most High. We don't know that Yahweh's salvation is by faith alone, but by that faith we will produce the works of righteousness, because faith without works is dead, brothers and sisters. Your faith, your faith is accounted for righteousness, which Yahweh imparts His grace and His mercy and blessings upon you and covers you, covers your sins by the blood of Hamashiach. And the promises and covenants and rewards are now yours. And we are under Yahusha now, under grace, and in Him. And in Him is the spirit of righteousness and holiness, which is the Holy Spirit that is sent to you. And through the Holy Spirit, He binds what is freely given what is done to step number two, the Holy Spirit. This is the line 
that binds. Step number two, where there is verbal repentance, confession of sins, which is a work, it's an act of faith. You start studying the word of Yahweh and the Holy Spirit is your helper. And you start being washed clean. And you start to be washed clean. And you grow in the word. And you start being converted. There's a conversion that takes place. Let me put converted. And purging by the word and testimonies. Remember the word is given for instruction, reproof, rebuke, and edification to the works of righteousness. The purging of your soul cleansing of your mind and your heart. Then you start obeying the law, statute commandments, honoring the Sabbath days and the feast days, and observing his judgments, therefore producing the works of righteousness in your life. But you can't boast in your flesh. You can't say, because I'm circumcised, I have salvation. You can't say, because I'm obeying these laws, statutes, Sabbath days, feast days, I'm saved. That's not how it works. This is all freely given. It's, 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 it's separate, but it's together with this. It's separate, but together. But what binds it together is the Holy Spirit in the saved one's lives. But in the others, some of them have their own version of faith and righteousness, self-righteousness. And they're claiming all this. And they'll pick and choose what they want to do here. And they form their own self-righteousness, their own salvation. Out of their own hearts and minds. Rather than from the one who walked, Yahusha. And the one it was all given to, Abraham. You see, Abraham's faith was accounted for righteousness. And he received all these blessings and covenants. Even before the cutting in his flesh. That's why this is at number two. Even before the cutting of his flesh. He received all this free. It was freely given by the most high. Then as a sign. He cut his flesh. This is what's missing. The understanding of. Where the laws statutes, commandments fit in. As Paul said, do we make void the law? Yahweh forbid. Yea, we establish the law. You know, by faith you establish the law. So up here is faith and love. And uh, you, you start loving Yahweh. You thirst and hunger after his knowledge. And you start loving your neighbor. You put on the fruits and gifts of the spirit. And you walk in the spirit. Now this takes a lot of practice. With while you're doing this, you're gonna be increasing this. You'll walk, you're walking in the spirit. So this through the binding of the Holy Spirit, leading the God in you as a holy helper, will increase this. Brothers and sisters. So this is one of the final understandings of the new covenant created. By faith alone, Muhammad Shaq in the spirit. You see, Moses catered to the written word and the flesh and the acts of the flesh. And a lot of us didn't understand the faith part of the walk until Shiloh came, till Hamashiach came, Yahusha came and showed us the spiritual aspect of the new covenant. And what he has done free, you know, freely for us. And so the salvation of the Most High is by faith alone. You receive all this by faith alone. Then he sends your Holy Spirit, the, his Holy Spirit to you to help you 
do these things here. So you like to press pause and copy this down. Please do so. And I'm going to be adding to this thing probably every video changing a little bit here and there and you can do the same there's more stuff you can put down here which which is more acts and works of the most high that shows you are in the body and that you are uh, you have the covenant but some people is out here doing some of these things and they don't have the spirit on the most side they don't have the faith in the spirit of the most high because they're doing these things thinking that because they're doing this they have this no no just because you got on fringes you're walking around Looking, you know, you're obeying the laws, you're obeying some statutes, some commandments. You can't boast that you are saved by that way. That's what Moses brought. And now what Hamashiach brought is this up here. By your faith alone, you are saved and granted. And by faith alone, it, you know, that existed with Abraham and all the saints before that. They had faith and belief and obedience and they walked in the spirit of the Most High. Ah, oh, okay, I did put obeying here. But with that, brothers and sisters, tell me what you think in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Shalom.